Hello and welcome into the latest edition of ESPN FC. Kay Murray, Craig Burley and Stevie Nicholl here in the studio. And we start with some big news today. Thomas Tuchel will be the next England manager. England have finally appointed the replacement to Gareth Southgate on a permanent basis. Thomas Tuchel signing a deal, the English press obviously all over the back pages. A news conference expected at Wembley tomorrow. Tuchel will be only the third non-English manager to take charge of the three lines after Sven Joran Eriksson and Fabio Capello as well. So England have their man. And obviously this is something we're going to go into a little bit and what it means for Manchester United as well. Rob Dawson joining us for that part of the segment too. How but... we get Man United into it? Well, of course we can. I'll tell you and we will show you. But uh, thoughts on Tuchel's appointment? Well, you know, if you look at the candidates that were available, he's probably one of the best out there. I mean, the, there was a bit of... Uh, a little bit of talk in the media about the Manchester City manager, but I think I don't know how much was in that. I mean, obviously, if you could get him or a Jurgen Klopp or an Ancelotti, then then that's what you're doing. But you're not you're not doing that. Uh, so when you, you go down the list, he is the most experienced, uh, probably the best out there. Bearing in mind Pochettino's taking the uh, the U.S. Men's National Team job, uh, I never ever felt that Lee Carsley was going to be able to sort of step in and handle that, particularly the way the English media can get get on to you. You know, we saw that after the uh, the bad performance against, who was it again? Greece. Was Greece. When they played badly against Greece and, yeah. and he made all these changes. Uh, and then you're looking at the Eddie Howes and, and one or two others. So in terms of what's out there, I mean, I, you know, I don't think he's the greatest, I, I, as I say, I, Guardiola and Klopp for me, and Ancelotti, and there's maybe one or two others out there, uh, really, really stand out. And then I think you're down to sort of Tuchel, and then below that maybe Pochettino. So I think it's as good as they can get unless they go a different route. Uh, but, you know, I think, I think quite exciting for England, apart from the fact that I'm already hearing and reading about this. He's not English. He's not English. I mean, we're all, we've already started already. Uh, you know, the, the back pages are picking up a little bit of it. Social media, where maybe we should just ignore. You know, already talking about, you know, we saw it with Lee Carsley. You know, he doesn't sing the national anthem, doesn't do this. We've kind of already gone, and he's not even announced yet. We're, we're kind of already seen a little bit of that so far, which I don't agree with. Uh, and let's hope we don't go down that line. But I think, in general, a very, very good appointment. Uh to Craig's point, Rob, going back to the realistic options that were available to England, was Tuchel their first choice? Yeah, I mean, I think certainly Craig is right that of the candidates who were available, Tuchel is, is probably the best of that bunch. That There was talk a little bit about Pep Guardiola. There was an informal approach made to Guardiola in the summer, but I don't think that the response that the FA received was, was particularly enthusiastic and they've had to go in a different direction. The, there's a little bit of surprise in England about the speed at which this has been done. Even a few weeks ago, the noises around the FA were that they would prefer to appoint Lee Carsley, um, someone who's had success with, with the under-21 teams, as, as Gareth Southgate did before he stepped into the senior role. Um, I think this week, though, this, this camp has been quite bruising for, for Lee Carsley on the field. You know, Craig's mentioned that defeat and the performance against Greece, but also in the media room as well. You know, he's gave, given some very um, strange answers about whether he actually wanted this job at all. Um, and then since that, the FA have moved on and, and, and looked at Thomas Tuchel. And as Craig has rightly said, of, of the, the candidates who were available, if you're looking for a guy to get you over the line to win a tournament, Tuchel is the best of that bunch. He's got the CV to prove that he can win trophies. I think this is a good fit, Stevie. Yeah. Yeah, I, can't... I think for a change, you've got to actually give the FA some credit. You know, clearly, they were hoping that Carlsen would be able to do the job. But clearly, after the Greece game, and I think after the Finland as well, I mean, they might have won the game, but there's a lot of problems in it for me. But they've acted quickly. You know, they've, they've actually come to a quick decision, having given Carsley these, these couple of games and decided that he's absolutely not going to be the guy. And they've, they've made a good choice from, from what's available. He's a good coach, he's got a great resume. You know, he's, the problems that he's had in club management at the likes of Bayern, have, have, have all been about things that he wanted, that he couldn't get. Well, in this job, he's got every single thing he wants. He can pick what players he wants, certainly the ones that are available. 
He can, he can ask for anything and he'll get it. And so we're really going to see what Tuchel's made of in terms of coaching. His resume tells you he's a great coach. The problems he's had with all his clubs is, is, is down to him, supposedly, wanting this and wanting that and causing problems with certain people in high places. Well, he's not going to have any of those problems now. So if his resume is exactly what it is, then he should have no problem sorting this England team out. He's quite combative, isn't he? And he's quite intense uh, on the training field, we've heard. And I think getting away from that day-to-day -day involvement of having to deal with you know, some unhappy players and, and Chill them he out was fighting those at Bayern. He certainly was fighting some big politics and some ludicrous decisions at Chelsea at the end. And so he steps away from that and he's worked a lot with a lot of these players. He's worked with a lot of these England players. I mean, not that it really makes a difference because, you know, managers coming in for wherever in the world have dossiers and, and on every player and, you know, you're watching, you know, it's a global game, you're watching it wherever. But, but then Harry Kane, to your point, he did, he, him and Harry Kane at Bayern last season, that was a very nice partnership if you were to look at it that way. No, it was, but I've got news for you. Harry Kane's <laughs> not going to be around forever. He's not exactly 25 anymore. But you know, your point is right. He knows, he knows a lot of these senior players. He's very experienced. He's worked with big stars across, the, across Europe. He's worked with big egos. Uh, you know, he's got his folks. Uh, like every other manager. And, you know, this is a great opportunity for them. And, and I say it again, they've, they've been down the... Look, England have... Look, but people sitting watching this saying, you're Scottish, what, what, you know, what of Scotland? Well, Scotland, Scotland don't have the players, they're not very good, right? Just don't have what it takes to be competitive. England do. England do. And you can't be frowning about, well, everything... And I read, I read one today from a, a very uh, a senior... Uh, reporter in England, uh, column is saying everything should be English. The manager, the kit man, everything should be English and it should be like so patriotic. And I'm like, oh, come on. Surely we've gone past that. It's about getting somebody to get the best out of some of these very, very good players. Some young players, some older players. Uh, there are some deficiencies in the team. If you look maybe at the keeper situation with Jordan Pickford, obviously the back line's been a bit of a talking point. How do we get all these you know, the balance right with these great attacking players that England had. We saw Lee Carsley throw them all in. That didn't work. So there's, there's a lot to work with. A lot to work with. And you have to, surely, as, as, as a media person and as a, as a supporter, you have to embrace that if you're an England supporter and look past where you're from. And look, so what can he do for us? What can he do that's better than Gareth South getting anybody before him? Just go that next step. And I don't think you can criticise that. Let's ask the Englishman on the panel first how you feel about it, Rob, but also what you're hearing from this side of things about it all being so pro-English when it comes to a coach for the Three Lions. I mean, it's certainly part of the debate. Um, you know, there are England fans who believe that the coach of the English national team should be English. Um, they felt that when they appointed Fabio Capello and also Sven Goran Eriksson, and, and those, those England fans probably aren't going to change their mind. I think above anything, though, England fans want to see their team win. So the FA have to, to pick the right man for the job, the man who can deliver that elusive trophy. And I'm sure in a perfect world, the FA would love to appoint an English coach, but the, the candidates just aren't there. If you look at the pool that they were picking from, if you're going for a purely English coach, the names that were mentioned were, were Eddie Howe and Graham Potter. Well, Eddie Howe is, is in a job, a comfortable job at, at Newcastle. Graham Potter is, is out of work, just as... Thomas Tuchel is. But if you're going to appoint Graham Potter over Thomas Tuchel, then you're appointing him simply because he's English, not because of anything to do with his CV and, and his ability to, to win trophies. Because if, if you're making a decision purely on your ability to win, Thomas Tuchel wins that, that hands down every single time. So the FA, I'm sure at the press conference tomorrow, when they explain their decision to appoint Thomas Tuchel, will point to that. They laid out their criteria in the summer when they were looking for a replacement for Gow Southgate. They said that they wanted someone with extensive knowledge of English football, of the Premier League, and a track record of, of winning at the highest level. Well, Thomas Tuchel ticks all those boxes. The, the one box that perhaps he doesn't tick to the FA is the fact that he's not English. Well, you know, in the scheme of things, really, that doesn't really matter. And I, I promise you that no one will be talking about the nationality of the coach if England win the World Cup in 2026 in the US. That his nationality will only become an issue if he doesn't win and he starts to lose. That's when that him being German will be thrown back in his face.